Hello guys, in this video, we are going to learn forward recursion method by an example of shortest path problem. Here is the outline of this video. Let us begin with terminology of dynamic programming. Here is an instance of shortest path problem. The graph in this slide represents the shortest path problem. The cities are represented by nodes and the paths between the cities is represented by the arcs or edges. The goal is to move from city origin or node O to city destination or node D. Let us say you are on node O origin. Now what are the possible decisions you will make starting from node O in order to reach node D? Well, the only decision you can make now is to go from O to 1. So node O could be a state of dynamic programming problem and node 1 could be a state of dynamic programming problem. Now we know that in dynamic programming, a decision will take you from a state in a stage to a state in the immediate next stage. Therefore, node O could represent a state in stage 1 because it's forward recursion we are going to label the first stage towards the left hand side as stage 1 and then the decision will take you to stage 2 and we define stage 1 problem as all the possible decisions that take you away from stage 1 to the next following stage and the next following stage will be stage 2 so in forward recursion stage 1 problem will be Starting from stage 1, all the decisions that you can make in order to reach stage 2. Now from stage 2, what are the possible decisions that you can make? Well, you have only one state. And from that state, you can make two possible decisions. That is, you can go to node number 3 or node number 2. Since there is no movement or since there is no decision that will take you from 3 to 2, or from 2 to 3, 3 and 2 could be part of one stage. Now the decisions that you make at stage 2 will take you to the next immediate stage and that's how we create stage 2 problem. So the stage 2 problem will be starting from stage 2, reach all the possible nodes that you can and those nodes that you can reach from stage 2 are part of stage 3. Now from stage 3 you have two states you could be at any of those states and from any of those states you can make some decisions and those decisions will create the stage 3 problem and the decisions will end at stage 4. That's how you can define the stages, the states and decisions for a shortest path problem. Now the question is, can we always find these three elements for any shortest path problem? And the answer is yes. Here are some examples. This graph represents another instance of shortest path problem and the objective is to find the shortest path from node O to node D. Clearly, these are the stages for this shortest path problem. Let us look at another example where the objective is again to go from node O to node D. Notice that node O could be part of stage 1 and from node O you can make decisions to reach node 1 or node 2 or node 3. However, you can also have some decisions that can take you from node 1 to 2 and node 3 to 2. Therefore, node 1, 2 and 3, they cannot be part of one stage. Why? Because a decision can take you from one stage to the next immediate stage. A decision cannot take you within a stage. Now how to fix this problem? This problem can be easily fixed by adding some dummy nodes. For example, look at these dummy nodes. We add a dummy node between node O and node 2. Let us call this dummy node 6. Similarly, we add dummy nodes 7, 8 and 9. Now once we add a dummy nodes, the next step is to define the distances. This is how we define the distances. We say the first half of the arc has distance of zero units and the next half of the arc have the actual distance and that's how you can add the distance to each and every dummy nodes arc. 
And now this is how we can define the stages and the corresponding states and decisions for the shortest path problem. All right. Now let us see some of the notations of forward recursion method. In forward recursion method, we have these two notations xi and fi of xi. xi represent possible values or a possible value of state in stage i. So i represents the stage number and x can take possible state values or a state value. Now fi of xi is the objective function value from the start state to xi. For example, in our previous instances, the start state was node O. So fi of xi will be the objective function value from node O up to the state xi. And that's the definition of xi and fi of xi in forward recursion. Let us take some examples and try to understand these notations. Let us say you are at stage i problem. So stage i problem goes from stage i to stage i plus 1 in the forward recursion. Let us say i is equal to 3. Now let us see what are the possible elements for x3 and x4. x3 represents possible states in stage 3 and x4 represent possible states in stage 4. The possible values for x3 are a, b, c and for x4 they are y and z. We can represent the objective function value from the start state to state a in stage i as f3 x3 equals to a or in short f3 of a. The optimal objective function value from the start state to state a is represented by f star 3 of a. Now for this stage i problem, in the forward recursion, we know the objective function value at stage i. What we would like to calculate is the optimal objective function value at stage i plus 1. That is, we know f3 star and we would like to find f4 star. Let us take an example. f4 star z can be equal to the optimal objective function value at node a plus the distance from a to z or the optimal fun objective function value at b plus the distance from b to z or the optimal objective function value up to c plus the distance from c to z. Therefore, f4 star z can be written as the minimum of these three options. Similarly, we can write f4 star y. In short, we can write f star 3 plus 1 given the information of f star 3. So stage i problem, say for i equals to 3, can be stated as given x3 and x3 plus 1 and the information of f star 3, find f star 3 plus 1. And the relation between f star 3 plus 1 and f star 3 is written here. This idea can be generalized for any stage problem. For instance, we can say, given xi and xi plus 1 and the information of fi star, find fi plus 1 star. And here is the relation between fi plus 1 star and fi star. This relation is the famous recursive relation for forward recursion method. Therefore, the goal of forward recursion is to solve stage 1 problem followed by stage 2 problem all the way to stage n minus 1 problem. And stage n minus 1 problem is defined as given xn minus 1 and xn and the information about fn minus 1 star find fn star. Finding fn star is nothing but finding the optimal objective function value of the entire problem. Now let us try to practice these notations with an instance of shortest path problem. In this graph, you are given with 7 cities and the goal is to find the shortest path from node O to node D. The numbers next to the edges represent the distances. Let us first identify the stages of the shortest path problem. Clearly, these are the stages of the problem. Now let us begin with stage 1 problem. For the stage 1 problem, let us try to fill this table. In this table, 
I have here what are the possible end states. At he, in this part, I'm going to write what are the possible start states. And then here, I'm going to write what is the objective function value. And here, I'm going to identify the optimal objective function value. In stage one problem, the possible start state is O and the possible end states are 1, 2 and 3. Now going from O to 1 is of 7 units distance. Going from O to 2 costs or, or the distance from O to 2 is 8 and O to 3 is 5 units. The optimal objective function value to reach node 1 is 7. That's the only option we have. Similarly for the other nodes we have the optimal objective function value. Now the corresponding best start state to end at node 1 is node O. Why? Because that's the only option we have. Similarly, we can do it for the other nodes. Let us summarize what we have obtained from stage 1 in this tableau. And now let's focus on the stage 2 problem. Stage 2 problem starts at stage 2 and ends in stage 3. Here is the table that we are going to fill for stage 2 problem. The possible start states are 1, 2 and 3 and possible end states are 4 and 5. Now in stage 2 problem, the distance between pair 1 and 4 is 12 units. The distance from pair 2 and 4 is 8 units, so on and so forth. So you can fill all these distances. These are the distances for stage 2 problem. Now, to reach node 1, the best possible distance that we have from the previous stage is 7 units. Similarly, to reach node 2, the best possible that we have is 8 units. These are the distances that we will add to our current distances. Therefore, the shortest distance to read node 4 will be minimum of 12 plus 7, 8 plus 8 or 7 plus 5. Similarly, the shortest distance to reach node 5 will be minimum of this one or this or this. Now for node 4, the shortest distance is 12 units coming from node 3. Similarly, for node 5, the shortest distance is 17 coming from node number 2. We summarize the information of stage 2 in this table and then we move to the next stage problem which is stage 3 problem. Here is the table for stage 3 problem and these are the possible start and end states. Now the shortest distance up to node 4 from the previous stage is 12 units and the shortest distance up to node 5 from previous stage is 17 units. In the current stage going from 4 to D will have a distance of 9 units. Similarly from 5 to D we have a distance of 6 units. Therefore the shortest path to reach node D will be minimum of 9 plus 12 or 6 plus 17 and the minimum is 21 units coming from node 4 and here is the summary of stage 3 problem. Since we have 4 stages the last stage problem that we are going to solve is stage 3 problem. Therefore we have the shortest path from origin to destination. Now how to obtain the shortest path? Well we need to look at this summary tables and read it in the backward order. In order to reach node D, the best possible start state is 4. Now in order to reach 4, the best start state is 3. And in order to reach 3, the best start state is O. Therefore, origin 3, 4, D or O3, 4, D is the shortest path from origin to destination. Now having the results of forward recursion, we can find other interesting stuff as well. For example, you can find that the shortest path to reach node 5 is 025. Similarly, the shortest path to reach node 4 will be 034 and so on and so forth. That is all what I have for the forward recursion. In the next video, we will cover backward recursion.